She said when vitamin D is low, our body basically goes into hibernation mode. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So could it be a vitamin D deficiency? Today I'm talking about vitamin D, the fact that it's a hormone, and that it is not a vitamin. And according to Dr. Stasha Gominak, um, it is essential for our microbiome. Hi there, my name is Sue. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you've not been here before, I have been eating a carnivore diet now for just over two years, and I'm still having issues with my gut. And so if you've not watched my earlier videos, I have a lot of videos talking about my gut health and my issues with um, with IBS diarrhea and the fact that I had that prior to carnivore and then it uh, actually got worse for quite a while when I started on carnivore and didn't actually kind of even almost resolve until about 18 months in. Now I've been a lot better over the last few months, but I still have problems. It is so easy to upset my gut. It doesn't take much at all, and it's happened again just in the last few days. I decided to try drinking robust tea instead of decaf coffee, and I also um, tried this sauce that I bought for my hubby that was it's a jalapeno sauce, which jalapenos seem to be fine for me, but it had xanthan gum in it, and that really seemed to upset my gut. So I don't know whether it was just that or whether it was a combination of things, but I am on day four now since that started, and I just feel like I'm kind of getting it sorted now. So this was perfect timing. I had not heard of Dr. Stasha Gominak um, until Lizzie, you know who you are, Lizzie, um, left a comment on one of my videos and asked me if I'd seen a recent interview with Dr. Gominak uh, on somebody's channel. And I hadn't ever heard of her, and I went and had a look, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll watch that, even though it was it was about sleep. I mean, the title was about sleep. I don't have really an issue with sleep that I know of, or not a bad issue anyway. Like, I, I have go through phases where it's not so good these days. Um, but my husband has had issues with sleep and still does a little bit. Um, I did a video a while back, a couple of videos, talking about our grounding sheet that we bought and how much of a difference that made for him, and it has made a big difference. But he's still, um, as the weeks have gone on, he's he still has mornings where he wakes at 4.30 or so and struggles to get back to sleep, whereas other mornings he'll wake and then he gets back to sleep again. So um, this information from Dr. Gominak actually um, makes a lot of sense with regard to him. But I didn't realise that when I was going to start watching the video. So if you've not heard of Dr. Stasha Gominak, she is a, uh, was a neurologist. She's retired now. And a lot of her practice was, um, was focused on headaches and uh, then eventually sleep issues. Sleep has become her thing. And so then from, from that, it's, she's got into, uh, delved into a few different rabbit holes, vitamin D being one of them and B vitamins. Uh, being another. So I've had this kind of long-standing, I don't know how long-standing, vitamin D deficiency. And my I first kind of realised that I had this deficiency. We were living in Queensland for years. Um, my children grew up in Queensland and I was tested because I, I don't generally go to doctors and um, I don't think, uh, you know, until recently that you could order your own vitamin D tests. Um, I'm not sure whether you still can in Australia. You probably can, but um, I don't think you could earlier. And so it wasn't really something that was on my radar. Um, but I went to a doctor when I was about 46, I guess, um, because I had stuff going on that I didn't know, I couldn't resolve. And it turned out that my thyroid was overactive. And my vitamin D was tested then. Now, at that stage, I was living in Harvey Bay. And my test result came right at the bottom of the range. So it was just in there. And I remember my husband said to me, he said, how come your vitamin D level's low? Because his was, his was in, within range, his was fine, his was quite high. Um, we were on the beach every day and, you know, walking, swimming, sunbathing, you know, we don't wear sunscreens. And so I just, I didn't know. I knew that vitamin D played a role in thyroid health and I knew that vitamin D played a role in gut health. Um, but I kind of didn't, think too much of it I just kind of thought well something's broken in my body and my body is maybe not converting that vitamin D from the sun um, or not you know converting the whatever comes from the sun onto our skins into vitamin D and just kind of left it at that I didn't start taking a supplement or anything I probably should have but I didn't um, and so I just left it and then 
about four years later, yeah, because I was 50, uh, was the next time I went to a doctor, and I was still living in Harvey Bay now, but we had been away for 18 months in a camper van, living outside, I was black, like my skin was black, I'll put a photo up here of how dark I was, and so we had been back in Harvey Bay for about three months, and I went and saw a doctor again, because again, I had some stuff kind of going on, it had been going on while we were away, that I just couldn't kind of get on top of and so I went and saw a very good doctor and he uh, sent me for tests and diagnosed me with pyroluria uh, which I've spoken about in some of my videos and uh, my vitamin D test at that stage came back below range so it was low so I'm living in sunny Queensland I'm on the beach every single day walking swimming going sunbathing before I go to work um, sunbathing after work, sunbathing on the days that I don't go to work. I have been away for 18 months living outdoors in a camper van and my vitamin D levels are low. So that kind of had me really stumped and uh, but once again I just kind of let it go, didn't realise its importance and I guess and didn't supplement. I've supplemented very occasionally for short periods of time with vitamin D but I've always been a bit iffy because you know there's so there seems to be so much um, different information about it, and you know whether it's good to supplement, whether it's not. You know, I kind of knew that it was a hormone, but again, didn't really pay a lot of attention. So my next blood test for vitamin D was last October, and I tested myself because you know being on the carnival diet now, I was interested to see whether my blood levels might come up, and they had. So when I did my last blood test, um, my level came in at 81 NML, NM, I think it's nanomoles, NMOL per litre, which is what we measure here in New Zealand. So Path Lab, who, do, who did my testing here in New Zealand, um, they're one of the bigger labs here in New Zealand, they, their range shows on the thing as being 50 to 100 nanomoles per litre. And I came in at 81. So I'm kind of in the middle of that range. So I thought, oh, well, that's that's an improvement. <laughs> but, but it's not really. So 81 nanomoles per litre converts to 23 NG per milliliter. And that converts to 14 um, NG, I'm getting confused here, NG per milliliter. So that's uh, actually really, really low. But if you go to a GP here in New Zealand, they're going to look at that and say, oh, that's fine because it's within range. Um, now, Common Sense Labs, Dr. Berry's book, Common Sense Labs, which is a fantastic resource to have if you want to be able to do your own testing or look at even look at your own testing that the doctor's done to see where the optimal ranges are. It's a brilliant um, book to have, and um, I'll pop a link to that below if you want to go and check that out. So, in Common Sense Labs, it says that uh, the normal range that they have in there is 30 to 100 NG per ml, and then optimal is between 50 and 100. So New Zealand's 14 is really low um, when you know the, the normal range that, that um, Common Sense Labs is saying 30 to 100. And listening to Dr. Stasha Gominak, uh, she's kind of on the same page. So um, me being at 23 is way too low. Now, as I said, Dr. Gominak is a neurologist, and when she was practicing, a lot of her patients were young women with daily headaches and, it turns out, sleep issues. Now, some of those women didn't know that they had sleep issues, but what happened, She, Dr. Gominak listens to her patients, and I can't remember what, what actually happened, but she ended up sending patients for um, sleep studies and ended up doing that with over 2,000 patients that had daily headaches. Now it turned out that all those patients that had daily headaches also had sleep disturbances and they weren't getting into deep sleep or REM sleep. So some of them just weren't getting into deep sleep, others had sleep apnea, but I think she said it was only about 30% that actually had sleep apnea. Um, so you know, she's talking about sleep and it's really become her thing, it's become her passion. She actually had a sleeping issue as well, which as she said helps, you know, if you can find a doctor that has a sleeping problem, they're going to be a lot more interested in the information that she has. Um, than doctors who don't. Funny that. Um, but she said that, you know, these days there is a real epidemic of sleep issues, including with children. And I mean, children didn't used to have sleep sleep problems, but now they do. It's really, really common. 
And so when she started to realize that all these patients had sleep issues, she was then trying to work out, okay, why? Why have they got sleep issues and these daily headaches and other health issues as well? So when she started to look into the research, she eventually realized that, hey, okay, so the brainstem that controls sleep has vitamin D receptors in it. So then she started to look to see whether vitamin D, uh, whether there was any research between with vitamin D and sleep. She said at that stage there wasn't any, but she did another search and found something that kind of led her to that anyway. So she's looked at a lot of research over the years and um, she has discovered that there are vitamin D receptors in many, many areas of our body. And in the brain stem where sleep is regulated. So she said she discovered what she did not know. I mean, this lady's a neurologist and was not taught this stuff at medical school. She discovered that when we are in REM sleep, so that's that rapid eye movement sleep where we are in a deep sleep, we actually become paralyzed, which, as she said, is a bit creepy. But when we become paralyzed, the reason that it happens is because our body is healing. Um, the muscles and the tendons and the, the things you know in our body and so if there's movement happening in the body then that's not going to be a great idea um, when the body's actually trying to heal so that's why um, our bodies actually become paralyzed while we're in that deep sleep so she started um, experimenting on herself and giving her patients some of her patients vitamin d and she discovered through trial and error that vitamin d fix the sleeping issues once the levels get above 40 mg per ml. So this is what I'm saying about the, the levels is, you know, if New Zealand is saying, okay, well, 14, 1, 4 is the bottom of the range, that is nowhere near the 40 that's required for people to sleep properly. And she said, you know, not everyone knows that they've got a sleep issue. So, for example, she had an 18-year-old girl who came to her with daily headaches and was you know, tired and all the rest of it. She sent her, you know, she asked her if she slept properly and the girl said, yeah, she slept eight to 10 hours a night, fine. But she would wake up tired, you know, and just not feeling like she'd slept. So she sent her for a um, sleep sleep test and discovered that she was having no deep sleep. So her, her brain would go into um, the, start to go down towards a deeper sleep and then it would kick back up into light sleep. And so she was just going into light sleep all, all night. And so her body wasn't healing, wasn't resting, wasn't recuperating and doing the things that it was supposed to do. So as I said, she started to experiment on herself and um, also give her patients vitamin D. And what she found was that for all of her patients, once they got over to that 40 NG per ml, their headaches would go away and they would start sleeping properly and um, getting into the deep sleep. But then after two years, both she and her patients uh, found that their symptoms started to come back. So the headaches started to come back. They started to, you know, not sleep properly. And she's like, what, what's happened? I thought I had it nailed. And so then she started digging into more information. And what she found basically is that vitamin D, so vitamin D is a growth factor for that is required by um, our bodies, by our microbiome, to have a normal microbiome. So she said that there are four phyla, which are the types of bacteria that all humans should have, and that these bacteria, these four types, make B vitamins in our body. So if there's not enough vitamin D, these four types of bacteria drop in numbers and other types can increase in numbers that may be not so beneficial, that aren't making B vitamins and that may be more inflammatory. So what she eventually re ended up realizing was that when she and her patients were taking the vitamin D and they started sleeping better and getting into that REM sleep, as their body was healing, their body was using those B vitamins to heal and eventually created a deficiency because taking the vitamin D didn't increase the numbers of those bacteria. So what she realized eventually was that that both are needed, the vitamin D and the B vitamins, and that the um, microbiome numbers needed to increase um, to be able to maintain that, that healing that the body was trying to do. And so what she ended up realizing was that if she gave her patients um, vitamin B complex um, supplements, then that helped to increase the numbers of those bacteria 
that after three months she could they could stop the the B complex supplement and things would be fine. If they carried on with those B complex complex supplements, the symptoms would come back because what was happening was that they would end up with too much of those B vitamins. Now she realised before giving the B complex, she kind of realised that it was actually vitamin B five was the bigger player in all of this. But you can't give it by itself; it causes problems. And so the B vitamins have to be taken together, and that was something that she remembers she had been taught at medical school, one of the few little bits about uh, nutrition. So what she said was that vitamin B5, because she did try giving it on its own, and she said she found that patients came back, like she lost patients through that because they had such a bad response to it. Um, she said that it is, it's, even though when you look at the literature and when you look online, it says that there's um, B5 deficiencies are very rare. It's in all these all the different foods. She said it's not a usable form in the food. It has to be made in our body. And so if we don't, if we do not have enough of the microbiome that make that, then we are going to be deficient. And deficiency is going to increase as as the years go by, basically. And so one of the really common symptoms of B5 deficiency is burning feet. And I know that in my in my business with clients, I have quite a lot of clients that complain of burning feet. And I knew it was a B vitamin. I actually thought it was B1 that caused it. But apparently it's B5. And she said when she had the um, patients come back after they'd been taking the B5 and had bad reactions to it, some of them, there was two of them that had burning feet and burning hands. And so the burning hands is a bit more rare. Um, but she said to have two come back at, at, you know, at the same time that we're related or anything, it kind of really got her kind of thinking and realising that giving the B5 on its own was a mistake. So when B5 is deficient, um, it causes sleep issues and headaches and gut issues, um, fatigue, um, depression, irritability, vomiting, stomach issues, you know, GI issues, burning feet and upper respiratory infections and muscle cramps. So this is all, all stuff that, you know, I'm looking at myself with my symptoms. I'm looking at my husband with his symptoms because he has a lot of problems with cramp. And even prior to eating the way, I mean, he's not carnivore as such. He has still has sourdough bread and he still has some fruit uh, off and on. Um, so he's having more carbohydrates, but he still gets cramp. And But he did prior. And these days it seems to be mostly in his hands. And so he'll go and try and do something in the garage and he can't do it because his hands just keep cramping up all the time it doesn't seem to matter how much magnesium or potassium or whatever he takes it just keeps happening and I'm wondering if this is why my thoughts also is that um, this kind of popped into my head when I was typing up my notes to make this video is could the carnival diet over time because because we're healing and things are getting better and maybe our vitamin D levels are going up because we're consuming more in our diet, we're consuming more cholesterol to convert into vitamin D. Um, maybe this is why sometimes after a period of time there's some problems that come on, you know, like muscle cramps. Like, you know, it's like me with my gut issue. It, it kind of gets to a point where it's feeling a bit better and then, it's, and then it goes backwards, you know. It's like, is is this why? Because... Like in my case, I don't have the microbiome to make those B vitamins and you know, my vitamin D is probably still low. I just went and had a vitamin D test today, so I'll have those results in about a week. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of my thoughts on it, is that maybe the healing that happens on carnivore for people who don't have enough of those microbiome or who don't have enough vitamin D in their bodies or both um, is one of the reasons that we still continue to have problems um, over time. Now, B vitamins are bacterial growth factors. So they actually feed each other and they so, and increase the numbers um, to get to a healthy population. So, you know, one, one of these bacteria might make B5, another one might make B1, and the one that makes the B5 might consume B1, and the one that makes B1 might consume B12. And so that's, that's how they work. So they need, that's why you need to give all eight of those B vitamins um, to increase the numbers of the bacteria um, in our colon uh, or in our digestive system uh, to healthy numbers so that we have enough B vitamins being made in our body. Dr. Gominak, um, from what I can gather listening to her videos, I've listened to a few of them now, her interviews, um, it sounds like she gets her patients to start taking um, the B vitamins once their levels reach 40 NG per ml. So once it reaches that level, then that's when the sleep and the headaches kind of tend to go away. 
and I think that's when she gets them to, to start on the um, on the B vitamins for three months and then stop them. Um, so I'm actually going to buy her right sleep program and work through that with myself and my husband um, so that I can learn, so, yeah, I mean for us obviously for our health, but also so that I can learn this information so that I can help um, family members and clients and, and, and that's um, because I think this is really important information. As she said, she's the only doctor, she's the only person out there talking about this. And so if this um, works, and I mean, I've read a lot of the comments underneath her videos, people that have been working with her for, you know, a few years or a couple of years or whatever, who have had great results. Um, and so obviously what she is doing does work. And um, so, yeah, so I'd like to understand it more and know how the process goes. So then I can hopefully help others to uh, work their way through that process as well. Now, the other part of this, so there's a, this is it's complicated. Our bodies are complicated the way that they work. And that's why I've been listening to a few of her videos to try and get a handle on how this all works. But she said the other part of this is that um, D, so vitamin D and B5, um, when you've got enough of those, um, it allows your body to make acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter uh, so that's a transmitter in the brain that is involved in focus, memory, learning, attention, muscle function, and REM sleep. So it is involved in that paralysis that allows the body to heal. Acetylcholine deficiency is associated with anxiety, lack of focus and attention, sleep issues, and it's also involved in the, that whole fight or flight versus rest digest responses in the body. Um, it is anti-inflammatory as well, and it just helps to calm things down and helps with good digestion. Apparently nicotine has the same uh, similar effects to acetylcholine and the body uses the same receptors I think um, and so you know for example if you're smoking cigarettes or using nicotine patches that can make up in some ways for an acetylcholine deficiency but as she said you know it's harder to um, to dose that because how much do you have you know whereas if it's being made in your body your body knows the perfect amount for you to be having but she said that they are doing trials now on kids with ADD and autism um, and I think maybe Alzheimer's as well I'm not sure uh, with nicotine patches to um, see how that affects um, them and the way that their brains are functioning and you know as she said says that sleep should be the focus of all doctors. I mean, what she's realized is that sleep is probably the most important thing for our health and, you know, for, for anti-aging. You know, I mean, she talks about how all people, as they age, when they become elderly, they all start having sleep issues. And this is because their, their body's ability to uh, manufacture vitamin D actually starts to break down. And so that's why it's so common to see elderly people who can't sleep at night. You know, they sleep during the day. It's like their whole body clock's out of whack and they're just not getting good quality sleep. And as that deteriorates, that's how the end of their life ends up happening because their health starts to deteriorate. Their body's not healing. Sleep is really needed for healing and just normal function. And so if we can, you know, monitor our vitamin D levels and keep them up then that's really going to help now vitamin d um, part of what she talks about as well is the role of vitamin d in the body so um, when you think about it from nature and and our natural cycles she said when vitamin d is low our body basically goes into hibernation mode and that's the way it's supposed to be so if you think about it somebody who's living in a cold climate um, you know back in the caveman days whatever um, we're out in the sun during the summer doing all the stuff hunting fishing you know and and getting all the vitamin d and then as the weather starts to cool off those vitamin d levels start to lower um, there's not as much food around so your body's going to shut things down slow it all down so you don't need as much food there's less en less energy being expended um, you're less fertile you know, all of the stuff, it's like the bears and, and that go into hibernation. I mean, vitamin D is something that's used by all animals on this planet. And so the animals that hibernate, it's their vitamin D going low is, is the signal for that to kind of happen. And, and that allows their bodies to survive through the winter. And that, that was the same with us. I mean, if we're living in a tropical climate, that's completely different. Tropical climate, we're out there in the sun and you've got the vitamin D um, high just about all year. But in the colder climates where there's less food around, 
then uh, obviously, um, you know, it's it's just natural that our bodies um, would go into this kind of slowed down hibernation state. You know, thyroid slows down and everything, so that we don't need as much and we don't need as much energy. It's just basic survival. So what is the optimal level of vitamin D? That's something else she talks about. There are so many different, um, when you look, you know, at, at the research and the different recommendations, there is, they're all, they all vary. And like I said, I mean, our level here in New Zealand at Path Lab is ridiculously low, um, and a lot of them are. So as she, as I've said, um, Dr. Stasha says that um, over 40 NG per ml is where people stop getting their headaches and stop um, having sleeping issues. But she said she's found that with most of her patients that between 60 and 80 is optimal. Now, the next problem is that some of the testing is dodgy. And so she says that, you know, the testing used to all be done by LCMS testing, um, which is what is used to test hormones. But as more doctors started sending patients for vitamin D tests, instead of putting the tests through this machine, they have started using another type of testing called immunosay, which is not accurate. So she has compared tests um, from the LCMS versus uh, the immunosay testing. And she said once you get over 40, um, it can be out by as much as 20 points, which makes it really hard to judge your levels. I mean, I've had a look here in New Zealand. The testing is done by the immune assay testing. You cannot, from what I can see, get LCMS testing. Um, and so chances are that the results aren't going to be accurate. So all you can really do is, is to get tested fairly regularly, uh, whether that's monthly or three monthly, as you're taking your vitamin D supplements. Record your symptoms so every time you have a test and see where your levels are at record your symptoms and find your sweet spot um so you know if you if you get to you know 45 um and your symptoms go away and then you keep taking your vitamin d and next time you're testing and you come in at 65 and your symptoms have come back, or some symptoms have come back, or you've got new symptoms, then you probably need to drop it back and find where your upper limit is. And so that's basically the only thing that we can do. Now, the other thing here in New Zealand, uh, apparently Canada's the same, is that we cannot buy vitamin D over 1,000 milligrams per dose, which is really um, pretty criminal. And so that's what we have to deal with uh, here in New Zealand. We, um, I mean, obviously you can order higher doses from overseas, but chances are that customs may grab them on the way into the country. I've had, uh, I've not had, I've had that happen with other supplements uh, in the past, and a friend of mine has had her vitamin D taken by customs, and um, Dr. Stasha Gominak was saying that she has had. Um, clients and patients uh, that live in New Zealand that have had the same thing happen. So if you're willing to risk your money, you can order from overseas. Otherwise, you've just got to try and do it with 1,000 milligram doses and um, put up with the expense, basically, because it ends up working out more expensive. And so this is all very complicated, uh, as I said, um, and it's only a tiny part of the whole picture. I mean, the, the thing, something I've been thinking about, you know, with this whole carnivore meat-based diet um, of late is that it's only a little part of what we need to change to really be um, healthy in this modern world. Be, to, to be healthy we need to kind of focus uh, back into the past, you know, to, to think about the way that people lived, you know, 20, 30,000 years ago and compared to the way that we live now, you know, there's there's to be healthy, we've got to look at, you know, our diet and our exercise, getting enough fresh air. Uh, mold exposure is a biggie, which I've had experience with, and oxalate um, is a biggie because, you know, if your bacteria in your gut isn't right and you don't have those bacteria that can consume the oxalate, then you're going to have more problems with oxalate. Um, household chemicals. So I've just watched um, an interview with Dr. Gominak on Judy Cho's channel. And like Judy mentioned, the sulfates that are in, you know, dishwashing detergents and soaps that affect the gut of their clients. Now, this is something that I've been aware of for quite a few years, and I've used safer versions of those products for a lot of years. Uh, now I've used the doTERRA products. doTERRA are quite mindful of the ingredients that they use, and they've got quite strict standards uh, these days about what goes into their products. 
Um, and so that's what I use because that's kind of the company that I trust the most to make safe products. And so if you'd like to um, try them, I'll put a link down below where you can order from. But, you know, the, their products are fantastic. And, you know, the, the stuff that is available in the supermarkets is just full of chemicals that, you know, if you have gutter shoes, they're going to possibly stop you from healing. You know, that I mean, that's basically what happens. The other things, of course, are, you know, glyphosate, which is a biggie. Uh, that's, you know, um, on a lot of the plant foods. And then mindset and relaxation, you know, like I've just... Um, got back into, made a commitment to myself a couple of weeks back that I was going to start meditating again daily. Uh, I've been an off and on meditator for years, but I've been listening to a lot of Joe Dispenza's work and the um, his studies on, you know, just spontaneous healing um, through meditation uh, with people that are going to his events are just amazing. I'm going to do some videos talking about that. Meditation is a huge um massively important tool that we can all use to really improve our lives and it's something that I want to uh, bring on to bring into my channel um, more because I see immense value in that and introducing people to meditation if they don't already meditate um, and the benefits of it so as I said I'm going to buy Dr. Gumanak's, uh right sleep program so I can work for myself and my hubby and help uh, potentially family and clients as well, who are having this problem. Um, I suspect that my ongoing gut issues are at least in part due to my long-standing vitamin D deficiency. Uh, and so, as I said, I'll be talking more about this going forward. Now, I will pop a link to um, one or two of Dr. Gominak's interviews that I've been watching underneath my video as well, if you want to go and check those out. Um, if you have got any comments or questions about any of this, put them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe and like and share because that really helps to support my channel. If you'd like to support my channel in any other ways, I've always got links in the description of my video on how you can do that. And if you choose to do that, I thank you very much. Um, I really am trying to do a better job here and make better videos. Uh, I've been kind of gradually purchasing some new equipment as I can um, so that I can make my videos better and, you know, doing things like buying Dr. Gominak's program, you know, it all costs, it all costs. And so I, I can only do that as I can do it. So it's kind of on a bit of a go slow program. So any support is gratefully um, accepted and I thank you very much if you do help. So that's it for today. I thank you very much for w watching and I will talk to you again another day. Goodbye for now.